Our dear Heavenly Father, O oh Lord, we ask a blessing upon this speed. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that they may be, find themselves in accord with the different questions and the different problems that they must work with and seek to solve. We know that uh, we all have a desire to be within thy favorable light. When the woman at the well spoke to Jesus, a stranger, she asked him, should we worship now in Jerusalem where the Jews say, or should we worship where our ancestors say, in Mount Jerusalem? Jesus responded, the time is come, and now is, and those who worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And it makes no difference where a person is, for they are able to worship God without being in any special place. And those who have responsibility uh, we pray that you will be with them, guide them, help them as is necessary, and, uh, and bring to their understanding that which will be of greatest benefit. And this we pray in Jesus' name, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Additions to the agenda. Uh, see the Cliff Foster Pine Consultant appointment letter. This is in regards to the zoning uh, commission. Are there any other additions to the agenda? I have one for uh, some previous damage that had been on the F-550 when we bought it that I want to discuss in just a few minutes. to hang 
on to it temporarily until we see what Rickman has as far as what he's wanting to replace the vehicle for. So I don't even know that we're going to do that. I'd say put it up for sale bid. Okay. I mean, I've got people that do put it up for sale bid. But they're not going to give us much on trading on it anyway. <coughs> Is there any certain condition like the uh, stickers and stuff on it? Um, I don't remember what we've done in the past, whether we've required the buyer to take those off or if we took those off. I would prefer that we take them off. That way we know it's done. Any specialized equipment needs to be stripped. Yeah, there won't be, no, there won't be anything in it but just the vehicle itself. Okay, if you work with you to get that notice drawn up and put the paper. Yeah, well, it'll, it'll, I mean, it'll take us a little bit to get the sticker and stuff off, so I'd, I'd rather get that done, and then once we get that done, then we can go forward with do with that, if that's all right. Okay, that's all I have. Two centers. The only thing I have is uh, on a good weekend, on a nice weekend, I usually either get complaints or ask if people can burn, and right now, the only time they can get a burn permit is during hours. So I don't know if there's a way we can change that somehow so that people can get a burn permit on the weekend so that they can burn on a Saturday. Anybody has any thoughts? Are you willing to be available to issue them? Well, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be my, my first concern is the fact that there's nobody in the office and bringing right. somebody in require time. Yeah, I mean, I could, I could do that. So I just don't know how we want to handle it. And I'm yeah. not familiar with how the process works. They come in, basically fill out some papers, right, Luki? I'm not, I mean, I've never, <coughs> they just fill out a piece of paper and pay their $5. And um, They come in and obtain a permit, which costs $5. Um, they do it on a weekend. They'll give them a choice to do it either Saturday or Sunday. Right, so, but yeah, and I understand they can come in on a Friday and do it, but then if the weather changes, then they're out that money. They, they can't burn and they don't get their money back because the permit's only good for a day. So, And that's been the complaint. Okay, anybody else? Okay, we'll move on I mean, I suppose. I mean, I. I guess I don't have a problem doing that. Um, I just maybe if I fill up permit and put it in the drop box or something out here. If the issue is not being able to use the permit because of weather or whatever, wouldn't it make more sense to just allow them to have the permit issued for another day or the day? I mean, I, I guess that's fine with me, but the people that get up on Saturday and it's a nice day and they're like, oh, I need to burn, and then it's too late. I mean, that, that that's the issue. Oh, I thought you said the issue was whether the weather blew them out. Well, right. I mean, if you look at the weather on Friday, sometimes Saturday says it's going to be a nice, and then it turns out not to be nice, or vice versa. And I mean, I, it, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just trying to make everybody happy that calls me and says, hey, why can't I burn and I can't get a burn permit and all that. So I've told the last couple of people I will try to figure something out so that if they call on a Saturday, maybe we can figure something out that they can burn. Anybody else? I mean, if not, it doesn't matter to me. 
Like I said, I'm just trying to... Any ideas, Marsh? Bring the complaints. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, have a cure I, I suppose if it has to have a seal and all that, I mean, there's no really other way to do it than they have to come in and get it beforehand. You know, the only the only thing that I can see changing is allowing them to come back in and say, hey, the wind came up and whatever, and I couldn't burn on Saturday. And can you stay on there either Saturday or Sunday? Yeah, that's so what we do now. The, they come in on Friday. So do they have to they they have to put a date down, correct? No, it says on the permit you can either burn Saturday or Sunday. Okay. So if they go to burn Saturday and it's too windy. Sunday, okay. if it's not, they can go ahead and burn. Okay. So, if they look ahead, Friday come in, obtain the permit, you can use it either day, Saturday or Sunday. Okay. Okay, so for right now, we'll leave it the way it is, and you can just let folks know that they can use it either day. Okay. Okay. Did you have anything else? That's all I had. Okay. Okay. Um, I need a motion for probably a 20-minute executive session um, for non-elected personnel to review potential candidates and um, interview questions for those potential candidates. So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries for a, oh, I'm sorry, to include mayor, council, and the city attorney. We could be at uh, 731. superintendent. Currently there is not a computer station for that position here in the office. I know there's one down at the treatment plant, but I really think that we need to set them up with a system here in the office. Um, have Vicki contact CIC and get a user login, generic user login set up for the financial software to be able to access reports and that type of thing. Um, and get an email account set up you know, the standard things that you would expect someone in that position to have and use. So basically what I'm asking is for permission to purchase a computer station for this area back here at an amount not to exceed $1,500 and it should be somewhere between $800 and $1,000 and we'll purchase it from RC computers, mm -hmm. which is our typical vendor for doing that kind of thing. Thoughts? Discussion? Do they, I mean, do they need access into the report stuff and the financial side of it with them having that? They have budget responsibilities. I don't know why they wouldn't. Okay. They're not going to be able to change anything. They'll just be able to get in and review reports and print stuff out if they need it so that they can distribute it amongst their supervisors if they need it for some reason. Okay. I guess I have no problem with it. It's fine by me. Mm -hmm. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 4-0. Mr. Williamson. We, um, We've started, uh, we have the big pieces of the playground equipment erected inside the plant where we have everything staked off down in the park. We're going to start drilling holes so we can set all that in the morning. The whole system has to be put together before the cement is poured to hold it up. So it's kind of a lengthy process. We made a mistake and didn't plug off a sprinkler that was in the middle this morning or we'd have done them today, but it was a swamp. So anyway, um, the reason that I, I wanted to bring this up is that on the north side where the uh, handicap approach is, it comes in between the basketball court 
and the swing sets now, and we're going to incorporate the playground stuff we have now in with the swing sets that are existing so we can just mulch everything at one time. But between that swing set and the curb is about six feet of grass. Uh, to the west of it, there's a handicapped drinking fountain. You cannot get to that drinking fountain with a wheelchair if you try. It makes it tough to mow and keep cleaned up. And what I'd like to do is we want to redo that approach going into that new playground and stuff where it's all going to be incorporated together so handicapped kids can get in it. And just pour that strip along on the north side of that going to that drinking fountain. It would be about uh, 40 foot long, five and a half, six feet wide. Um, we'll do the foreman and the layout and everything and we might talk to uh, John Mansell about maybe helping us finish it so it's a quality looking job. And in, in front of the basketball court we have about a two foot strip. When the guys go in there to mow them, they catch the corner of those um, borders that are on there and they've chewed them up with mowers and everything else and we just like to clean it up so it looks nice. And when we're done, we've got five trees that we want to plant part of in the fall when the freeze comes on and if we're able to do it. Uh, that we had left over from when we did the North Park and did some of the stuff in the square that we've got healed in down south of the plant that are getting fairly large and if we don't plant them, why? We're going to have to cut them down. They'll be too big to spade. So uh, we want to clean it up a little bit, you know. I figure there's only about three, maybe four yards of concrete there. So we're talking about four or five hundred dollars in material. Then if John would charge us anything, I would hope he'd donate his time, you know, just to help us finish it. But we'll do all the work if he'll just help us finish it. And then Nick wanted to uh, uh, put in down on the southwest corner. Uh, we've got one set of bleachers down there for his little kids soccer field now and there's another handicap ramp on the southwest corner and another handicap drinking fountain there and pour a slab along there. I haven't gotten with him yet to see how big. I think he wants to buy another set of bleachers for that and by pouring that slab underneath it then it makes it easier to maintain and mow and the weeds don't grow up and, and that stuff. So. Is the rec commission willing to come? I, th I think he probably is. I think if I remember right, I believe he bought those north bleachers when we did that years ago. So I'll get back with him on that, but the cost of concrete, you know, the whole deal will have less than a thousand dollars in the whole deal, I think. So it's really under spending limits, but I, I thought maybe it was something you guys might want to discuss. You know, if you don't want to do it, that's fine, but I just think, that, you know, we're starting to get some kids using that park and uh, maybe later on a couple of park benches around it so that mothers can sit there when their kids play on that equipment. And, and the trees will help shade it too to where that stuff in the summertime can be used without being 100 degrees when you curl on it. So anyway. Council have any thoughts or comments? I think it's fine. We're saving the money on them installing it. I think it's fine. I mean, yeah, it works. Clean it up, make it, make it usable. We found another place to maybe get mulch too. We might be able to save some money on it compared to what they were they were going to charge us like uh, seventeen hundred and fifty dollars to mulch that area. I think um, there's an outfit south of Pratt sells mulch. It's probably a whole lot closer. Maybe it was the same place, but we need some in the North Park, uh, in that playground equipment. You know, places around on some trees. I mean, we could probably use a couple of big truckloads before we're done, but we'll get some cost and, and, and bring it back to you, you know, as we get to that point, so. All right. The other thing I had was on that F-550 when we bought it, of course you all know the story behind it, that it took a couple of hitches and about three weeks to get it home, and uh, during that time it got, it, it experienced a couple of hailstorms, and so we turned the damage into EMC, and uh, they wrote us a check for a little over $2,000 for the damage and they wrote it on paintless dent removal, but I took it to uh, a, a body man had him look at it. He doesn't feel like part of the dents can be removed that way. And it has a spot up on the top of the cab where probably at one time somebody dropped something and they tried to pull the dent out. It still has weld marks where they've welded tabs on there to try and pull it, a crease across the hood, a few things like that. And for a total of about uh, $3,200, we got just a little over 2000 from them for about $3,200, he'll do the whole deal. And, you know, for what we have invested in the truck, we're going to keep it a long time. Um, I'd like to, it was $3,273.70, so it'd be about $1,200 difference. I'd like to go ahead and get it fixed. Okay. 
Can you not send that estimate back to EMC or whatever? I can. They're within $200 of what they estimated, Troy, is what they are. The first estimate uh, with EMC was <coughs> 2000 and $2,060. He estimated uh, on the hail damage $2,413, and we had a $100 deductible, so we're within a couple hundred bucks. Okay, well, I would... I mean, I can turn take it back, it back in, in if you want to. Sure. Get as much out of the insurance I'll, as you um, can. I'll take it back over to Trey and have him look at it. So, but he didn't feel like, he thought some of those dents were a little bit deep for trying to pull them and trying to do it without doing some paint work on them. So, anyway, that's all I have. Did we know about the dent when we bought it on top of the cab? No, we did not because we didn't see them in person. We didn't see them until we picked them up. I mean, most of it was pulled out, but it just a little body work and a little bit of paint, you know, and it would just be a whole lot nicer. I mean, it's a... Well, on the top, nobody sees it anyway, do they? No, but that's not the point. It's about half rusty, and it's a $45,000 truck, and we're going to keep it 20 years. I just think, you know, if we could start with something that was clean, why, you know, we take care of them. I mean, we park them in every night. We wash them once a week. We take good care of them, so... I just think it would, you know, look a little better, and, I, and the guys are proud of it, and we take good care of it, so... Uh, if we're going to get those dents taken out, why not take the rest of them out? Why leave it half done? So, anyway, that's all I got. Appreciate your work on the background equipment. Sure. Mr. I uh, the only thing I've got is I provided council members a letter that I received from the uh, county attorney's office. In response to uh, Council Member, I was directed to write a letter self-reporting an incident that occurred several years ago um, that may have been a violation of the Open Meetings Act. Uh, Mr. Shepak has since responded uh, to that letter um, in which he is requesting that the city enter into a, a consent order, essentially a restart, where the city is going to agree uh, not to violate any further um, or not to violate the act further, um, and in exchange he will defer um, any kind of um, prosecution of um, of the violation. Though it's uh, candidly, I don't know how you prosecute council members that aren't on the council. Um, but uh, any anyway, I've not received a copy of the consent order. Uh, when I do, I will certainly bring that to the, uh, the city's attention. It's just a short letter from Mr. Schenbeck. He did not address the specific allegations. Okay. At this time, I need a motion to recess to land <coughs>
it, it's not necessarily, I mean, the purpose of the land bank isn't necessarily to make money, it wasn't my understanding. No, it's it was but have affordable property for people who might want to come in and build and so become right. permanent part of the community. And I just thought that this would be right. a good opportunity to possibly pick up some land. But, I mean, I know the one on North Main, there's already a citizen. Right. Is after it for some purposes, which I wouldn't allow me to be interested in it. The no. no one's on Main, I, um, first. Someone that has property right next to it or right, yeah, catty I corner. I That's why I said I didn't know if there was somebody already currently well, I, after it or not. That I don't know. Right, well, let me ask you a question. If you were at the sale and somebody in the area was interested that was adjacent, would you know them on site? Yeah. Oh, I think, yeah. I, mean, okay. I know there there I one person really had property there. I mean, I know. But I mean, also, I hate to say it go to somebody that's just going to leave the house. Is that the one? 
there's two the of them. Side. They're both on the north side. They're from the okay. one yeah. on the corner of the tips to the alley. From the alley, well, there's one lot. Well, there's two lots. Because John Paul owns one lot, Daryl Chanto owns one lot, and then there's these two, yeah. 410 and 415. I move that the land bank allow up to $2,000 for the purchase of track number 9 and track number 10 on the sheriff's sale list. Total. Total. Sure you want. I don't know if you Is that including the taxes and stuff? Yeah. Right there. Well, that's what I mean. I don't know. Here, because 410 is, is right 1,200. Well, I don't understand it, but if you read the last page, 215 taxes are not included in this sale. Anyone purchasing one of the above properties will still have to pay 2015 taxes. It doesn't so say whether it's going to go for this amount or, or not sell. Because as far as the city has been, we've always stated if it brings a dollar, it brings a dollar. It's sold. Right. So in that case, these you may not know until the, the time of the sale. Yes. They may come out and say. My, my guess is based on the, the way the initial petition was written, that they're going to ask for every, everything that last call. But and I wonder, without thinking about this long enough, because if the property comes into the land bank, which is free of taxes, whether you do, you guys would be responsible for those two thousand taxes. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I really don't know. What that but I mean, what we've always done in the past on these is it didn't matter what it brought. We wanted to get it back on the tax roll, so to speak. So. Right. If, if the bid opened up at a dollar and that's where it sold at, then you got it for five bucks or a dollar, whatever, whatever your bid was. Right. And I, and I don't have that information, and I apologize. The only information I have is, is what originally, back when they filed the litigation in 2014, January, 2015, I think. I would like to see a score of that amount. I mean, if, if that's what it is, if it's that dollar amount there anyway, then it's yeah, going to be on the sheriff's sale next time. Or the tax sale next time. That's what they did. They kind of wanted a certain dollar amount, or they wouldn't sell it. Well, I and mean, since then, we've always said right. it doesn't matter. And I didn't. I did not file an answer that's saying we want our. our okay. Money. And 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 I'm assuming the county has done the same thing as far as its taxes. Yeah. I don't know. But, but but without having the research, you know, I'm yeah, saying I'm know. assuming. So, you know, if, if you're giving somebody authority to do up to five hundred dollars, they can certainly. Bid it a dollar or two dollars. Right. <coughs> okay, so I well, my motion would be to, to give up to five or up to a thousand dollars, I guess, or five hundred dollars a lot. I move that the land bank authorize Marshall Sanders to 
act as its authorized agent for sheriff sale and allow him to spend up to a thousand dollars for track nine and track ten of properties listed. someone in that area that wants to buy them just stay out of it? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's okay. would be my guess. Okay. I mean, if they want to add on to their existing lots right. or whatever, they'll just bail out of it. Okay. Uh, here's your track 10 is in the city. Yeah, 415 was the first. I don't know why. You, you sent me all the ones you said were in the city, but you might include it. Just doesn't end. I was just yeah, curious just side by side. a mortgage that maybe if they can get against it. Oh. I guess you need to vote on that, don't you? Yep. All in favor? I 
and it states that if you remove a sidewalk that you have to put it back there.
about everything but sidewalks, landscaping, and screening. Yeah, this is probably not going to be anything. So. We'll see.
I act as the zoning administrator. Um, I would like permission to appoint C. Bickley Foster Planning Consultant as the interim zoning administrator of the city. Um, rate would be $77.75 per hour with no minimum charge. The city would only be charged for time assisted, would be charged for copies, etc. Um, and then they would be available to put on a training session for the city of St. John to, for newly appointed planning commission members and the new city clerk when they come in because they will assume the responsibility of zoning administrator. one between now and then actually hire one? We had a meeting on the first that had already been scheduled before the clerk resigned. Um, we had to go back and forth with Bickley several times to make sure that what we did was appropriate. Um, I mean, if we don't use them, we don't pay them anything.